know, mm. uh, because especially what's going on in this world this moment. Yep. So it's yep, really totally. important to be have a peace. Uh, what do you call uh, peace of mind? You know, yeah, yep. mindfulness. Yep. Yes. Yeah, yes. and I really found meditation, yoga is really really helpful, mm. and especially mm. if you want to focus on uh, your your thing. You know, when you are a creative kind of, you have to be connected to your true self to mm -hmm. create new thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because to avoid to repeat yourself and repeat the pattern. Mm, and uh, yeah, meditation is amazing, and yoga is really really helpful. Um, in my I journey. think you know in today's world there's so much noise you know literally noise from from being inundated with so much visuals and yes and you know and news from everywhere it's 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 you know it's good to be able to clear your your head it, exactly totally. yeah I mean one of the things I learned uh, from my teachers or guru or whatever you want to call mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. this inner journey uh, mm -hmm. I just look at the news just just one minute every morning or mm -hmm. once a day, not every morning. Uh, and that's it. I'm not going to follow because if yep. you just follow, you're going to, there is no end. You know, you have yes. to look at the news like a TV series. Like, yes. I think, <laughs> and you lost, what are you doing and who you are, you know? I mean, yeah, um, yeah I mean, so I'm kind of very focused on what I'm doing as a photographer mm -hmm. and even this coronavirus didn't stop me from what I'm mm -hmm. doing and what I'm trying to do or plan for the future or my next project. And it's really pushed me um, to the next level because I am happy to find out a way to interact with my mm -hmm. people, colleagues, agencies. So yeah, one of the things I just found, okay, maybe we can do virtual shoot or remote shoot, which is some of other uh, photographers I know, my colleagues, they do here. That's so, right. Yeah. I, mean, I, I remember last time I saw my parents was like five years ago. So okay. every time I do FaceTime with them, because no one is there to take a picture. So I said a screenshot from the FaceTime. I just tried That's to right. like take That's a picture right. from. So I use that kind of technique. But I improved them a little bit. Of course. To take a picture of the models yep. uh, from distance. And some of them kind of become a um, nice shot. And the agents and the clients like that. And they book us to do, mm. like, I mean, I had a client, they uh, hire us for to take a picture of like some clothes and send mm -hmm. the outfit to the model's house and do the remote shoot. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so anyway, and one of the other remote trip I had is right after our meeting today. Okay. It is 11 a.m. today. I have okay. a shoot with the models in New York. I'm going to do some beauty. Okay, wow. Yeah. Okay. In the studio. It's really, really hard because I have to talk with the models a yep. uh, couple of days before. I said, okay, this is a plan. First, show me what you have. And then, for example, they show me, okay. I live in this tiny apartment in New York or LA or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. So this is my phone. I have Samsung. I have iPhone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, well, do you have a tripod? Do you have any source of light, big window or whatever? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what kind of prop you have or clothes? Mm -hmm. So based on what the models had, I have to think about what can I, what I can do with that, what, yes. what we have. So I try to imagine myself, okay, I'm, I'm going to go there and I have to find out which corner is the best corner, which angle is the best angle for her. So yeah. after that, I create a mood board. I said, okay, this is a plan. You're going to shoot this spot. Mm -hmm. So what you have to do, you have to have a tripod mm -hmm. and you're going to take a picture or take a video from yourself. I'm going to direct you from Zoom. Mm -hmm. And uh, which is a very, very hard process and challenging because I have mm -hmm. to teach the models how to take a picture of herself. Right. And I mean, I mean don't they easy. do it? Yeah, don't they do that all the time, being selfies? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, you know, most of the models, they are not good on tech and this yeah, stuff. So yeah. they, they can do selfie. Um, yeah, yeah. Some of them they know which is a good light. Yeah, precisely. Some of them they are, 
Yeah, but some of them, they don't have a, mm -hmm. enough patience to do that. So That's I right. always be clear with oh, this. You have to be patient. This is not like a regular shoot. 99% yeah. yeah. of the job is on your shoulder. Yeah. I'm just talking <laughs> it like a guy. Yeah. I said, okay, yeah. do that, do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. and, and, and they start to appreciate you know, how, how tough a photographer's job is now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I think... Or, or, it, it could be a possible for future. I mean, okay. I'm imagine maybe why not? I mean, uh, I hope everything come back to the, a little look like a normal, like before. But mm -hmm. in future, if we have the AI or robot have a yep. high end <laughs> camera and higher quality, more than the smartphone. Right. Do you, I, I, I saw your game console, <laughs> the one you have. Imagine yeah. you have that one and you have a robot yeah. and you're sitting there and you yep. send the robot to the model or to the location you cannot go yeah and that like a drone like yeah yeah and you take a picture with you and even that one could put exactly. some lights exactly yeah <laughs> and totally. boom <laughs> yeah yeah i think you know um different different uh countries have different um, easing of the lockdown in terms of rules so um you know some 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 countries are, are obviously more uh, stringent with their rules and some are not so you know there are there are definitely photographers all around the world reacting to the current condition in terms of what 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 are the protocols and what can be done and what cannot be done you know yeah so yeah i think it's 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 going to be here for a while at least yeah but i mean i mean you know from 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 a, the point of view of of resolution you know and 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 obviously doing all this kind of FaceTime shoots, you are um, kind of limited to daylight in some ways, you know. Uh, I mean, yeah. obviously the models don't have, you know, flash systems and and, and, right. and so on at home. So, so, yeah. so do you think that's something that, you know, that, that you might be looking into, you know, sending maybe a flash head, you know, with a beauty dish to the model? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I know some uh, production and some magazine they've done. I mean, when was the corona was very, very like more serious than now. Mm. At the beginning, I remember some, I talked with some magazine editor. They, they tried uh, to send the photographic equipment mm -hmm. to the house of the celebrity. Yep. And try to train the husband or the partner she has, oh, gosh. She has. Okay. so okay this is a cool you have to use the like that this is like yeah. and yeah. they send the package like clothes and everything and so do not touch the package for two weeks mm -hmm. to make sure if there was a virus so they're gone wow. so yeah okay. kind of like really tough process at the beginning okay. i know some some uh magazine they produce their contents like that but um, yeah, well, but I don't like FaceTime shoot. I know yep. people call FaceTime shoot. I don't yep. do FaceTime because FaceTime, you have to record the screen or just yep. screenshot. The yep. quality yep. is very, very low. What yep. I do, I can share here my technique. Yep. You guys. Okay. Is yeah, I, maybe we can save it, save it for slightly sure. later when we, when we yeah, do yeah. start. Yeah, but that's really yeah. fascinating. I would love to know more about that. Yeah, yeah sure. Yep, super. Super. Well, guys, uh, as per all our events and all our talks, please do uh, post your questions over the next hour or so into the chat, and we will um, slowly ask Kuroj those questions. I will, I will, I will be, I will be pulling it off the chat. Uh, and for you guys on Facebook uh, Live, uh, please do put it down in the comments, and uh, Daniel will be forwarding it to me so that we can post it towards uh, Kuroj. Yeah, all right, and then perhaps maybe the last half an hour we could do a a, a open Q and A where you can come on video and uh, you know directly ask Kurosh whatever questions you might have. It's going to be a very candid session, like like all of raw session. It's going to be you know I uh, you know us talking about things casually. Yeah, it's 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 not our style to be too proper. <laughs> okay, um, yeah. All right, so I think, uh, yeah, we are at 8, 8.39 now. I think we can go ahead and start. I believe there'll be okay. more people slowly streaming in. Um, 
as as it happens uh we've got a bit of a crowd um coming in on 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 facebook live as well so all right guys uh let me why is there a line on my screen hang on oh okay cool uh hi good evening everybody lovely having all of you i think today um as we all know um we are we are in for a treat we've got a lovely lovely beauty fashion photographer from new york and la uh you know um I've I've had the honor of meeting him in 2013 when he visited Singapore. So he called on me, you know, came to my studio. We had a bit of coffee. We, you know, we chit chatted for a while, and then uh, uh, soon after that, I, I you know I believe you moved you moved to New York, right? Yeah, right yes. after that. Yeah, awesome. So um, yeah, I mean uh, that being said, I think you know um, he he he's he's growth since i've met him and 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 today which is a good seven years you know has been exponential ever since he's, he's moved to new york um i've always said you know that new york um you know has the infrastructure it has the community to lift you know your work as a photographer to be that much better because they have the right talent they have the right uh, um uh, infrastructure of 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 studios, models, stylists, hair, makeup, and everything, you know, to 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 get you to where you want to be, and 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 to and to be very refined with your work, and that's quite evident in um, you know Kurosh's work, as you can see. Uh, I've got to thank him firstly for waking up so damn early to join <laughs> us. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, it's it's five thirty in the morning for you, so um, really, really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, without further ado, Kurosh. Yeah, thank you, thank you, man. Thank you, everyone, for joining and be part of this uh, conversation. Lovely. And tell us a bit about. Uh, sorry, tell us a bit about yourself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, yeah I'm from Iran. Um, I grew up north of Iran, uh, the small city called. Uh, Shah Savar or Tonekabon, which is next to Caspian Sea, uh, one of my favorite places. Uh, you always have a nice sweater, and uh, we have uh, we have woods, we have water. Yeah, it's kind of like very nice nature. So, um, like many other traditional family, my family wants me to be a doctor. You know. <laughs> My family, you have to be a good doctor. You see that doctor, you have to be there. So anyway, um, when I was a teenager, I found myself, I'm kind of like interested in art. I was started drawing and, um, and uh, my brother has the camera, uh, like the Mamiya 35 millimeter negative. You know, back in the day, there wasn't like digital. <laughs> yep. So I was asking, okay, can you teach me how to take a picture? And we, we normally use that camera for like some New Year Eve, some birthday, but kind of like interested to take a picture. So uh, when I was 16, 17, um, I found myself, I'm, I'm really interested to take, a, to take a portrait of people around me, like my cousin, my uh, friends. So, um, when I moved to Tehran, the capital, um, to a study industrial design, I surrounded more with the artists and the photographers, and I learned much more. And uh, the laboratory who print my image uh, in Tehran, and the lady was working with, I said, you're, you're, you're really talented. I have to introduce you to one of my friends. She's a makeup artist. She's coming from Paris. She's Armenian, Iranian, and maybe we both can work together. So uh, I said, no, I don't want to be a photographer. I'm just doing this stuff for family and my fun. You know, just have a coffee with her. You never know. I said, okay. And I met her and she had a very, very like fashionistic eyes because she worked in Paris. And so uh, she said, okay, let's have an album together and we can pitch some client. Maybe we can some private client. I said, okay. But I let you know, I'm not a photographer, I'm a designer, and also I'm very interested in acting and cinema. So this is just fun for me. So she said, okay, don't worry about it. So we booked two models, one guy, one girl, and we created an album, and from there we did some other 
shoots. And so, and how, my how old will you? How old will you? I, I was like nineteen. Oh, yeah, wow. nineteen, okay. twenty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I didn't. I didn't have that much fancy camera at that day. It was very expensive for me. So, and even not light. I work with natural light. Like, if the client have like backyard, uh, some cool location. I just use the natural light. So I didn't even know how to use the flash. Those things were like for my dream. So anyway, um, I start to work like by word of mouth, friends of friends. Oh, my friend has a good photographer. If you have a, some events or some private session, um, he's very good. Uh, for example, they introduce word of mouth. So. Um, I work like that, um, let's say, um, till 2008, mm -hmm. and right before I moved to Dubai. Mm -hmm. So I create, so during those years, I purchased a couple of small lights. I tried to uh, create some home studio where I lived in Tehran. And I make some money and try to a little um, do more uh, modeling photography. I made some models and some people who are interested more on fashion photography and this modeling photography. So I learned much more. I mean, I, that those years was my really um, golden year to I, I create a base what I'm trying to do. And uh, when I uh, visit Dubai, I met one of the agency, model agency, and they like my work. I said, okay, you'd like to work with you. So they hired me as a full-time photographer. So I moved there in 2009. I stayed there um, in that agency for seven months because I had kind of like issue for visa because for Iranian, Mm -hmm. They had a hard time. They give a hard time to get a visa. So, right. and after seven months, I become a freelancer. So, mm -hmm. and I work in Dubai till 2015. And I create my own client. I, I made my own client, like commercial, different client. I mean, when I was in Dubai, I've done a lot of kind of photography, like the hotel, hotels, uh, interiors, architect, uh, jewelry, food fancy restaurant they hire me for there and for local designer for lookbook e-commerce um yeah different different kind of mm. client but when i moved to new york um yeah and i found dubai is enough for me first of all i cannot be a resident here because there's no chance to get a visa there so so i came to us and uh, I had some family in LA and they said, oh, you have to stay here in California. Here is beautiful. You miss here. Don't go to New York. The weather is tough. I said, no, I have to go there. So I went there and after staying here for two weeks in LA, I went to uh, New York and my first meeting start just two hours right after my landing. It was middle of the crazy winter it was super cold i never had this experience in my life to be cold like this <laughs> and my body and everything was shut even my phone my iphone was shut, just shut down after the 50 percent battery is low so um yeah my meeting started from there i had no friend there no one even i just know some people from social media from from email marketing from this mm -hmm. So I tried to find them and try to meet them. And I build up my network there. And I remember uh, the early day when I contact the agency, model agency, give me a model for tests, even for free tests. They don't, they never gave me a model. Uh, because they see your work, your work is from different worlds. Yeah. I mean, and I remember I met a photo agent and he was very nice actually because he gave me mailing because when you mm -hmm. meet in it when you email the agency more for the agency they normally they don't because because they receive so many many from different 
So, but he was nice. I mean, he met me and said, okay, what do you do? I said, okay. And he was very honest with me. You know, with this work, it's better to come back to Dubai or LA, just do Brighton. This is not fit for here. <laughs> I said, I know, but I came here, I want to stay. I want to know what can I, yep. what I can do. So yep. anyway, I start to rebuild my portfolio from zero yep. because yep. none of the picture I've made over the last yep. decade. I, I, Dubai, I, I remember uh, those pictures. I remember those pictures. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember when I met you yeah. in 2000. Yeah. You showed me. You, you, showed me. you have to you know, yeah. make different portfolio because yeah. each region, each country has their own standard. I mean, yes. even if I want to, move tomorrow to Singapore, I have to adjust my portfolio with that market. Because yeah. what I do here, or what I yeah. do in New York, what I mean mm. in LA, it doesn't match. Mm. I mean, yeah. the clients in LA is completely different from New York or other city or other country or Europe. Yeah. I mean, if you go to Europe, exactly. they have a different, different taste. Even the magazine, the clients, everything is different. Yeah. So um, yeah, I build up my portfolio from scratch. So try to I've done tons of test shoot. Mm. I, I mean, the picture you see, you see in my portfolio, mm -hmm. I would, I could say they are not older than uh, three years. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't have anything older than three years. So mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I just threw them out, it's like, okay, these mm -hmm. are not good. And yeah. I do it constantly. I mean, every day I create a new. Uh, image based mm -hmm. on my goal mm -hmm. and um, because first you know you have to know where you want to go uh, I, I see some photographers some young photographers they show me their portfolio mm -hmm. and that's remind me that's remind myself when I was like 10 years ago or mm -hmm. more than five six years ago because the picture is all over the place you don't know what's the person want to do you want to do beauty you want to do fashion you want to do editorial mm -hmm. you want to do men's because all of these because photography from the outside okay you are a photographer but i learned when i came to us because in my portfolio i had everything i had food i have jewelry i have product i have modeling i had events everything and one agent told me okay this is all over the place it's not professional here in us you have to say okay I am a beauty photographer or mm -hmm. I am a still life photographer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You might do some um, other type of photography, but you don't put in your portfolio, which is fine. Mm -hmm. Yep. But you have to know which area you are more, uh, your work is more stronger and you right. go for that. And right. the feedback I got from everyone, my beauty, is much stronger than the other uh, stuff I do. I mean, mm -hmm. um, my agent, my first agent told me, oh, you're not a fashion photographer yet. Mm -hmm. Don't call yourself a fashion photographer. Mm -hmm. You call yourself beauty photographer. And other agent told me, don't try to be a fashion photographer because if you say I'm a fashion photographer, you always compare and compete yourself with top 10 15 fashion photographers yeah. in the world yeah. and i said okay i now i understand the dif the definition of the fashion photography is now is different mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. back in the day i was thinking okay everyone shoot a beautiful girl or a handsome boy or fancy mm -hmm. dress you are a fashion photographer even if you work now with a model agency you are not a fashion photographer you're maybe just a test photographer you do tests yeah. for them but the fashion photographer is the one who shoot for Louis Vuitton campaign, Dior mm -hmm. campaign. Mm -hmm. And those names is just 10, 15 photographers. And those brands always go for those names. Same. Maybe yep. Yep. The sometimes they give a chance yep. to a young yep. photographer. Yep. And I said, oh, okay. Now I know what I'm doing here. So because mm -hmm. We, we as an artist we have to be an honest with ourselves and we have to the courage to receive a, a judge from the people who understand this business mm -hmm. and i think one of the things um, is really helpful in my development i was very very open-minded to receiving this feedback from the people i trust mm -hmm. 
I always ask, okay, what do you think about this picture? Even now, I'm, when I do some shoot, I have some trusted people, like a creative director, art director, or stylist, or the people who work with me, or they give me a feedback. And I try, I learn, do not, don't be upset. And someone say, oh, this is not a good picture. I shouldn't be upset. Okay, this is not good. I can do better. Mm -hmm. So uh, you should have really, really thick skin, especially if you work in fashion or beauty. The people you work here, I'm telling you, I mean, there is a lot of people who are very straightforward. They are mm -hmm. gonna give their comment on your face. Right. Yeah. Oh, your work is too commercial. Yep. So yep. should you take this as a compliment? Okay, you are a commercial, good commercial photographer. You make a lot of money, or you take it as something like, okay, you are a bad photographer. You are not the artist because, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> yes. But yes. So I met uh, a fashion stylist and a fashion director after four years. Mm -hmm. She gave me a meeting. After four years, <laughs> many, many times I tried mm -hmm. to meet her and finally she met me. Oh, okay. And she was busy on the phone. Even when she came to the coffee shop, I met her in uh, Chelsea mm -hmm. in New York. Mm -hmm. she, wasn't, she was super busy. And she said, okay, show me what you have. So I said, do you mind? I give a comment. I said, okay, yeah, of course. And so oh, this is horrible. This is no, oh, this mm -hmm. is so bad. <laughs> oh, this is good. So. Mm -hmm very honest you know yep, yep. they are not that's the only way okay. that's the only way to get critique is to exactly be, to get it yeah, honestly yeah. yep yeah if you want to grow as an artist i mean you have it doesn't matter how many years you work as a photographer you have to be open if you want to yep. grow if you're looking for change you have to see mm. um, the reality because um one of the problem the photographers they have they fall in love with their picture yeah you fall in love with the picture maybe because you like that moment, maybe you like that client, maybe you like that mood, maybe that day you are in a very good mood, or you mm -hmm. had a very, you got a very good vibe from the team, from the, you know, yeah. all of this stuff yeah. happened. Maybe yeah. you love that picture because it's click on some memories, good memories. But exactly. you have to, you don't, you just shouldn't affect by these. Yeah. I mean, Okay, just try to look at the picture again from the another person. Yep, yep, exactly. So, because yeah. you know, a, a a person that sees your portfolio will not will not share the same emotions that you do. You all have emotional attachments to certain shoots that you do that may mean nothing to anybody else, uh, right. except for you, right? Okay. Uh, yeah. Let me ask you, Kurush. Um, sure. How? How do you, do you, uh, you know, you say you do a lot of tests with modeling agencies and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know that you, you, you have forged uh, a lot of very good relationships with modeling agencies. Can you, can you tell us more about your process into, you know, establishing, you know, this kind of relationship with, with, with modeling agencies, perhaps, you know, the, 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 the photographers in our community can, you know, understand a little bit of that relationship and, and and how to start that relationship perhaps yeah sure i mean the best friend uh for the people for a fashion photographer is is model agency because models and casting is number one for your growth i mean good casting you're able to create better content and um you know Always when I'm trying to do a test or editorial for my uh, personal project, I always go with the mood board, try to create a mood board. Mm -hmm. At the good agency, when you um, want to approach them, especially if you are new and they don't know you, first they look at your portfolio to see, okay, this is the color of your work, it's okay. Because they have a different, different model, different gears. They, they are not going to give you the top one. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. yep. if you want to go and sh do a test shoot with the society management in New York City, they're not going to give you first like Kendall Jenner. Mm -hmm. Even if maybe if you have a cover for Vogue, it's mm -hmm. possible. Mm -hmm. but if you have a cover for maybe some smaller magazine and mm -hmm. it's not approved, 
editorial, they are not going to give you. So, so I always try to approach them with mood board, even now. So what they ask me, what's your plan? Because they want to protect their model's rights because they don't want to send the model to this test or to stay you and they end up to some weird picture or some unacceptable mood board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they want to make sure their model is safe. So, um, uh, yeah, I always create a mood board. I so said, this is a plan. This is a hair and makeup. Um, this is styling. And these are lighting. And mm -hmm. you're going to get like these final five pictures from this test or mm -hmm. four picture. And mm -hmm. the usage uh, is just for tests or from our archive or possible for submission. So mm -hmm. you have to build the trust with the model agency. The have to trust you um, and you you have to build this trust and this agency they are you know this model agency work they are very small because all of them they know each other it doesn't matter if you work with elite or the society img all these bookers always change they go from the img to dna and dna to the society or major model so so um all of them one they're not mm -hmm. separate so if you have a bad reputation in one agency, it's going to go over with yeah, all agencies. Of course. So yeah, and um, at the beginning, for sure, yeah, no one gave me a good model or model. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I've done so many mistakes. I've created some bad image at the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's wrong direction because I didn't know what I want. So that's mm -hmm. a problem. Um, that was a problem. So it take time to understand where I am, what I'm doing and where I want to go. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like understanding who you are as a photographer. So because you can do infinite concepts with different models, different. So, so mm -hmm. imagine if um, someone gave me the best model in this planet. So what, what do you want to do with him or her? You can do different, different things. You want to, you want to go very raw, like a document style. Or you want to go very, very like a Polish style. Yep. So um, I don't know if I answer your question here. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. let yep. me know. Yep. 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 I think, I think, yeah, that's, that's, that's cool. Um, let's, let's, let's share screen a little. Let me just get your, your, your website up okay so uh yeah tell us a bit about about your process as a beauty photographer uh i'm very curious about about you know perhaps maybe your 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 workflow in terms of of the way you you um you know uh shoot in 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 essence because i can see you've got a very uh very clean aesthetic you know in terms of the way you light in terms of the way you know, um, take for example, right? This image, you know, there's a there's a there's a right. very very clean aesthetic to your you know to your lighting, for example. And right. you know, I've always appreciated the way the highlights are so clean and subtle, and the shadows are so clean, and it's not dirty. It's everything is so clean. You can see every pore, etc. So uh, yeah, you know, maybe we can we can talk a little bit about sure. about about your process. Yeah. I don't have a, I don't have a. I don't have a complicated mm -hmm. uh, light setting mm -hmm. i don't confuse myself by lights because mm -hmm. since i work with the uh, natural lights so one of my favorite life se light setting is um uh, is octobank the okay. big octobank the seven yep. Yep. Uh, or five so okay. um this shot you show is i have only one source of light just yep. one yep. um and um, yeah, I try to say, okay, this is this is the light. Imagine this is a sun. This is mm -hmm. a source of light. The model mm -hmm. should be here, and mm -hmm. she shouldn't move like more than this angle or that. And I tell the model, okay, this is your area. You cannot look that way. Just try to work in this area. So um, yeah, I try do not to confuse myself with the technical things and i mm -hmm. in the same time i try to not in a wrong way mm -hmm. i mean for the big shoot of course i have an assistant like a tech mm -hmm. guy or light mm -hmm. assistant 
they take mm-hmm. care of these things. But mm-hmm. I try to be more on directing the model mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in terms of what is the expression should be and what's the angle should be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because I think um, photography um, or fashion or beauty photography is more than what I learned here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. Is more than just photography. You have yeah. to know and understand about makeup and hair. Exactly. You ha- you have to know. Okay, which what is the best hair? What is the best makeup? Because mm-hmm. if you don't know about this, you cannot take a good beauty picture. And yeah, I learned yeah. so much from my team and the people yep. I work with. And I was honor. I'm so honored to work with these amazing people, even from Dubai, from um, in Turkey, and here in New York City and US. I had a chance to work with the top artists in this world. So mm-hmm. I learned so much from them. I mean. Uh, one of my closest friends always was the best make, good makeup artist. And I learned so much about makeup. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm not a makeup artist, but I know what is a good makeup or not a good makeup. And what is a trend? I try to follow the trend and what's going That's on right. right now. So, and if you want to do fashion, it's going to be much harder because you have to know about the styling. Mm-hmm. You have to know how... The, seasons, the, the trend in the seasons as well. Yes, yeah, season and also how you want to show this jewelry, how you want to show this like um, dress to look beautiful and, and how you want to show these shoes. What is the angle? It's not just right. uh, have a good model and good makeup. Because for me, uh, having a, a good makeup artist and uh, a good stylist or good model is not enough mm-hmm. because first, me, I have to know what I want, what I need. Mm-hmm. Most of this picture is more editorial. So I step to the studio with plan mm-hmm. and I talk with all artists, like nail artists. Okay, we need these colors. Okay, for the makeovers, I need these colors. So the colors kind of like match. Or mm-hmm. for example, this shot is for the jewelry magazines, but like for mm-hmm. jewelry. So I try to show more jewelry here. Or if you go back to the first image in so the first image there uh the beauty one the series yeah i mean yeah this series i uh one of my makeup artists um she's a very nice and good makeup artist and she always like to try new thing and challenge so it's okay let's do the beauty so I said, okay, let's play with the color. So let's mm-hmm. choose like four color. If you uh, close this picture, I can show. Yeah, like purple, like pink, like blue, mm-hmm. like green. So let's play mm-hmm. with this color and different shape. And mm-hmm. don't worry about the hair because we are not going to show the hair. Yep. Because some, because here in US, I don't know how it's worked out because the makeup artists just do makeup. Yes. And the hairstylists just do hair. And all of them, they are very good on what they are doing. Yes. We have some combo artists too. They do hair mm-hmm. and makeup too, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but most of them uh, they do like specialized. Just just especially in one area. Yep. So yep. I told yep. her, okay, don't worry about the hair. It's just color. Keep mm-hmm. the lips very very simple. So mm-hmm. I kind of try to do creative direction here mm-hmm. from what I want. So it's not just okay. You are a good makeup artist. Do whatever you want. Okay, yeah, this exactly. is a reference and boom. Okay, good. So no, this yep. is not going to work. I mean, if yep. you want to be a good beauty photographer, you have to know beauty. what you want. Yep. Yeah, and what what's the purpose of this uh, mm-hmm. image? I mean, this picture, of course, these are for I've done for Glamour South Africa, mm-hmm. and uh, below is La Fischial Singapore, mm-hmm. the the edgy one. Yeah, mm-hmm. these are yep. La Fischial yep. Singapore. Yeah, and uh, because. I, that was a plan because I knew I knew what's the official magazine style is because yes. I research I had, I study about all the magazine I know what what picture is good for L what this is for Vogue or Bazaar all yes. of them they are a different brand and different brand they have a different taste and a standard you yes. cannot take a good picture of 
even a super model, so, okay, I want to submit or send it to the world. It doesn't work like that. You have to yep. know their style first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And um, um, I mean, you know, your, your, your images are so well cropped. You know, I love the composition in the way you, you compose. Do you do it in camera or is this something that you, that you crop, you know? Yeah, I would say wider. No, no, I would say 90% is the same crop. Okay. And awesome. another terrapensin, just maybe like a little tiny mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. adjustment, not just huge crop. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, mm -hmm. this is a long shot. I love that crop. No, it doesn't. Right. Because you lose the perspective and lose you lose the quality. Yeah. Because what? what you can get from like 100 millimeter lens, mm -hmm. you can't get mm -hmm. with like 50 millimeter. Mm -hmm. It's different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's your what's your go to lens? You know, as a beauty photographer, um, hundred millimeter. And if I want to have a little wider one, I'm used eighty five millimeter. Okay, and 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 you're shooting on a DSLR. Yeah, I have a Canon five D Mark IV. Yep, yep. Yeah, which is yep. a handy camera. Yep, yep. Yeah, I work with Phase One, and it's really really tough camera. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, it's nice. To, you get a very very good quality, but is not handy, you know. Mm. I mean, mm. yeah, and it's, it's heavy, <laughs> heavy. Yeah, it's a heavy camera. Yeah, it's, it's heavy. a very big. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And 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 how about retouching? You know, what is your what's your retouching yeah, process? I try, I try to have a shot clean as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I don't change light in retouching, or I don't change. I just clean up. That's mm -hmm. the meaning of the retouching. And even the mm -hmm. color, I try to be a little... And I have a retoucher team. I train them mm -hmm. how they have to retouch my picture. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. one of the things I tell them, okay, keep the pores, just clean yep. up. Yep. And they know um, they shouldn't give me a plastic skin. So yep. because, I mean, back in the day, if you look at the retouching and the image for like 10, 15 years ago. Yes. They are, they look very, very retouched. But yes. these days, the clients even don't like retouch. They say, okay, yeah. just, because we are in living in an era, so the clients kind of try to uh, respect the, their customers. Yes. Because they don't want to lie to them. Okay, if you use this, uh, lotion, your skin is going to be looked like that. Right, right. And that's why uh, the casting world has mm -hmm. changed too. I mean, back in the day, you have to be a very, very beautiful girl to be mm -hmm. a model. But now we see a lot of other type of different, different shape, mm -hmm. different color skin, different mm -hmm. looks. They yeah. are a model and they make a lot of money. I mean, even more than a beautiful, beautiful girl. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yep. But uh, as a beauty photographer, do you do you do you usually hire the models um, based on their how good their skin? I mean, good looks aside, yeah. You know, um, do you hire them as a as a deciding factor how good their skin is? As yeah. well, yeah. Yeah, skin is very very important, especially if you don't want to go for uh, extreme retouch. Yep. Yep. I mean. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like very particular about uh, casting mm -hmm. and I try not to work with the models who don't have a right skin for that kind of shoot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because you don't want to end up on extreme retouch. Yes, yes, because I noticed, you know, all your all your shots have such yeah. good skin, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's and like another. A, Another things in the beauty photography because since it's a portrait and all kind of this expression and all kind of mm -hmm. these um, things is comes to the camera. So mm -hmm. I try to. I mean, skin is one factor. Perhaps there is other factor to like um, use um, the model who have a good expression or mm -hmm. have kind of like charisma. Mm -hmm. Not just beautiful, beautiful. You yes. Know? Yes. Yeah. Of have course. something, some character. Yep. 
Yeah. So it's more than just skin deep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Tell us a bit yeah. about 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 your fashion as well. I mean, you know, you've got yeah, you've sure. got you've got a a a fashion portfolio here. You know, um, what kind of percentage of work do you do in terms of beauty and fashion, and you know how how do you see fashion as a photographer? Yeah, fashion very very hard to do because you have to move with season. I mean, the picture you took like a while ago is not going to work for the portfolio now because mm -hmm. unless you've done kind of like timeless mm -hmm. fashion. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want to really go with um, a trend, you have to nonstop do editorial tests and work with the stylist. Mm -hmm. And it's really, really hard because you have to understand about clothes. You have to understand about what's going on in fashion right now. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, um, and also if you want to do tests as a photographer, it's going to be expensive mm -hmm. because maybe, maybe it's one of the reasons I've done more beauty because it's much kind of like I had a portrait background. Mm -hmm. So I, I know the good portrait, the good angle. Mm -hmm. And the second reason is because beauty is easier to do. Mm -hmm. Because even if you don't have an aesthetic, you can go with your light in your makeup artist's place or they can come to you just tiny sets. And uh, yeah, you can get a very good beauty shot. But for fashion, you need a bigger studio. And also plus you need to hire the good stylist and the stylist have to bring the clothes and okay. those cost money because they need um, some fees for the transportation. Yep. Yeah, and um, mm -hmm. yeah, this is, um, yeah, I've done a couple of different fashion for the, um, for the magazine and some kind of these are for Glamour, top one for mm -hmm. Harper Bazaar. You're right. Uh, yeah. take, take, take this this image for example you know i i'm yeah. you know i'm loving the way it looks in terms of the you know the way the light hits right. you know there's 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 a there's a beautiful punch in your light you know by the way it wraps you know in the softness and so on and so forth mm -hmm. uh in, in terms of the contrast etc it's so american and I, I, uh -huh. if, if i can if i can say that in in yeah. in the way it looks it's a very new york tone you know, mm -hmm. how, 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 how do you go about, you know, executing this shot, for example, is it, is it something yeah. that. I remember I shot this one, um, uh, with my team at Milka studio, mm -hmm. uh, Milka studio is one of the, one of the big ones, yep. big, biggest studio here in New York. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, for this one, uh, I had a, again, I had a very, very simple, like just one octobang on the side mm -hmm. and even not a reflector. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, the model, I think he was standing, and beside, I mean, behind him was just like just white yeah. side. So it's become how gray far? Cause... How far do you use your octa? What's your 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 octa bank size, for example? I think it was like less than around like a meter, mm -hmm. one meter, mm -hmm. a meter and a half. Right. Yeah, so I really tried close. to play. I mean, mm -hmm. I asked, I asked the model, okay, just move this way, that way, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. a little closer, not closer. So mm -hmm. when I find my angle, okay, this is nice. I have a good mm -hmm. highlight here and a little good shadow on mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. part of the face. Right. So, right. do you yeah, do you, but, do you work with um, various brands in terms of light, uh, or, or are you are you with just one brand usually? I I used to use uh, Profoto a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but in some other sets, uh, I've been there. I mean, we use brown color or some other mm -hmm. brand. Yeah. How about Breeze? Do you work with Breeze? Grease? Breeze, Breeze. In oh, New Breeze, York, oh, Breeze. Yeah, yeah, Breeze. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Breeze is amazing light because mm -hmm. I, I see some, uh, I never had the chance to work with Breeze, okay. uh, honestly, okay. but I really love to because I see some other colleagues they use, it just give mm -hmm. you very, very sharp, yeah, like a daylight. Very light. as well. Yeah, yeah very clean. clean yeah. And mm -hmm. also you're able to do a motion and video with the same modeling light, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So it's, yep. Lovely. I mean, Lovely. all of these, they are depends on the client's budget. Mm -hmm. I mean, because 
eventually I have to pay the city or rent some lights. So mm-hmm. if they of don't course. have a budget, of course we cannot bring breeze. So <laughs> yeah. lovely. And, yeah. and, and, and I also see still life in your, in your, in your repertoire, uh, you know, tell yeah. us a little bit about, about how, why, why you're getting into still life as well. Oh, um, here's, how, here's the yeah. funny story because I used to do still life when I was in Dubai as a food mm-hmm. photographer or jewelry photographer. So mm-hmm. I, saw some of my beauty client they they need uh some still life photos photography as well so i tr- try to create a portfolio mm-hmm. to pitch more clients on this era because there's a potential to make money in this way as a beauty photographer so mm-hmm. yeah and uh with these i mean again uh, this is a collaboration between me and uh, the proper stylist who she's um a specify on this kind of work right and we create again mood board mm-hmm. it's okay these are the shots we want to take and right. this kind of lighting and she prepared the stuff she want to bring so right. yeah i've done this exactly before covid19 happened mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so um yeah it was fun and uh honestly it was the most quiet set ever because it was only yeah. me and the yeah. proper studies and that's it. No yeah. model, makeup artist, no. <laughs> Even I didn't have an assistant. I mean, not all of these pictures because some pictures from the different set and different mm-hmm. client, but mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, yeah, still life is- do you, do, you, do you see the still life contributing to your beauty work? Do you think it would, it would make you a more well-rounded photographer? doing beauty and then uh, beauty still life to yes to complement your repertoire yeah i think these two is kind of like connected okay and okay. could help each other mm-hmm. and i brought the same style like a clean polish yes. what i do in beauty to the still yes. life as well try to be yes. i i'm i'm kind of very very minimal yep. and try to be like polish yep and yep. i mean it's funny because i uh, met a magazine editor. I don't want to mention the name of the magazine, mm-hmm. <laughs> but the editor told me three years ago, oh, you know, your work is so polished. Mm-hmm. It doesn't fit. But the next year I saw a photographer, they hire a photographer, do a cover and it's super polished, <laughs> even more than me. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe I wasn't Polished enough. Polished enough. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's really hard because you go to the meeting, you meet different creative, they give mm-hmm. you a different, different feedback. Yes. You shouldn't take those hundred person. And yep. first of all, don't take those personal mm-hmm. because uh, maybe that moment, that person think like that. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow, he or she think different way. So, so you have to collect all of these uh, comments and see okay these are the feedbacks and this is what i have where i want to go so mm-hmm. 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 okay um there is a there's a there's a question from kremen uh he's he's asking uh for beauty shots uh, you know what is the standard you know as photographers in terms of you know um modeling shoots now um maybe maybe clement can you can you uh explain it i'm 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 not quite quite getting what you're trying to say maybe you can come on yeah it's it's kind of like general question yeah what is the standard Mm -hmm. i mean a standard for who and where yep yep Yep. i mean hello you can hear me yes yeah okay so my question is like um because nowadays people like to like it less retouched or some like it still quite polished like yours very smooth but still have texture what what is like the industry standard or rather as a like training for the industry standard what is the goal that i should be looking towards yeah you know we don't have one standard for beauty because if you want to shoot for nars the beauty brand is completely different from the l'oreal or maybelline or Stella there or Tom Ford, each one has a different type of works and they represent their brand, but that kind of taste. So 
But what I know from, if you want to answer this question, I mean, the industry, the beauty industry is going to more healthy, to more raw, to more natural, instead of being like super retouch uh, clean. You know, um, try to keep the beauty uh, like um, more natural as much as you can in terms of lighting, um, casting, uh, and retouching for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the skin should be real as it is, not something. And again, it depends. I mean, if you want to shoot for brands and commercial, it's completely different from what you do for editorial. Of course, when you want to do for editorial, you can do a little bit more creative than very, very commercial plain picture, you know? Okay, thank you. Of course. And one more thing, you know, um, I said you have to know, you have to know about the makeup. So imagine the company hire you for a campaign is related to lipstick. So you you have always have to know, okay, you're gonna represent this lipstick. You're gonna you're not gonna show the uh, some other beauty cosmetic for, for the eyes or the skin. So your concern is just so you as a beauty photographer, you have to know, okay, today I'm gonna show this lipstick how it is, how good it is. Or if you want to shoot for a campaign just for skincare, so you know, okay, this is for a skin. Or something for mascara or some other or nail or nail polish so mm -hmm. these are the key you have to know okay for a commercial you have to know okay this is what i'm trying to show or even if you want to do a, um, a story for a magazine if you jeff if you go back to the beauty yep. i'm going to show one picture yep if you scroll down a little bit uh, there is a golden look is a ver is a horizontal shot there is some text on it just a little down i guess on oh, this pop eyes that pop so for example if you look at this row and go up a little bit yeah there's some delay i can um, this one no no if you go up more please more yeah more please What's that? No, no, if you go close to the beginning. Okay. There is a shot, um, it's called, called a golden eye or gold eyes, eyes pop, something like that. Oh, it's okay. Shape, eyes that pop. For, shape, okay. for shape magazine, yeah. Yeah. It's an That's Asian right. model. Yeah, That's okay. Right. So this, this row, I mean, these, I mean, the magazine, the editorial magazine, this is, this is the eye story. So the picture you see is kind of like 99% is my crop. I mean, I didn't show that much lips because I wanted to focus on the eye. I don't want to yeah. see hair that much. I don't want to see her ear or even this job, you know, just eyes. Mm -hmm. The focus is just eyes because eyes is the main subject here. Mm -hmm. yeah, again, here eyes, you know, you have this style and you have the part of the fabric there, but it's still you see more eyes. And also with lighting, I try to focus more on I and my assistant try to pop up more um, lights with the reflector to the eyes, so okay. the eyes pop up more. So, yeah, I mean, beauty, you said, okay, just beauty, but beauty has a different, different beauty for hair, beauty for eyes makeup, for lips, mm -hmm. for skin, for nails, what do you want to show? So, so uh, I want to talk about this shot, the, the one with the... Um, which one yeah this one yeah this one yep yeah this this story is funny because i use natch super natural lights i love it in my old rooftop in uh, brooklyn mm -hmm. and i remember this this is a shoot i've done for marie claire magazine and yeah. marie claire serbia so this is direct sun mm -hmm. and yeah, direct sun, even not reflector that much. So just me, makeup artist, and the model, and that's it. And we create a concept because, okay, I'm going to do just, this is a mood. 
uh, nothing crazy. Again, don't worry about the hair. You're going to cover mm -hmm. the hair with this accessory. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, this is 100% natural light, direct sun. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 you know, I noticed you've got a very, very clean aesthetic to the point of, I would even say that you are more of a makeup skin photographer than a hair photographer. Would you yes. say that? Mm -hmm. Right? Because I don't see yeah. much hair in your work. Yeah. You know, um, I would say, you know, skin and makeup compromises of at least 90% of your work. 90%, yeah. yeah hair easily. is very, very hard. Yes. I mean, yes. it's very, very complicated. I mean, I have a hair stylist. If she want to do mm -hmm. and do the campaign for some shampoo, she needs like two, three hours to prepare mm. the hair. Yep. And the hair she's doing is super, super clean. And she take care of every details. Of, and also hair is very hard because you cannot retouch after. You mm -hmm. can mm -hmm. a little bit, but more yep. than that, it's going to be fake. Yes. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Love you. So, I mean, you know, in, in, in essence, you know, wouldn't you say that uh, being in New York, you have to be so specialized right down to that kind of level, right? You know, even as a beauty, they break out beauty photographers to skin beauty, makeup beauty, hair beauty right. photographers in terms of specialty. That's the kind of detail and specialty you need to get into to be a beauty photographer, for example. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's completely. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions, guys? Um, you know. Um. Okay. Serbi has a question. Is it hard for guys to learn about makeup and beauty? <laughs> How do you suggest newbies about learning and educating yourself about beauty? I mean, the best way is to um have a good relationship with your makeup artist. Even have a coffee, talk about makeup, what the trends is, and try to follow um, a magazine like other, like other magazine who are mm -hmm. specifically doing beauty. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, they is really help to understand more about the beauty. I mean, with this social media, you can lost middle of everyone style, but mm -hmm. if you follow the right people who are kind of like leaders in this beauty industry you understand what is what is the trend is and what is the standard is mm -hmm. that you yeah i mean uh for the guy it might be a little hard to understand but i mean, I mean um I mean, it's, it's it's just like learning anything that you do you know yeah. you you I mean, you make an effort to go and find out you know what what's a mascara you know what's yeah. What's foundation and you know yeah just general i mean of course i'm not a makeup artist i can't do even makeup i can't do makeup yeah. but but at least you understand the language yes you know you 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 because you know as as i always say you want to do wildlife photography you go and learn about the animals that you're shooting you know what i mean right you want to learn about astrology you need to find out where the north star is for example right these right. are basic things that you need to do to to understand the kind of photography that you want to do so if you want to do beauty photography you know, you need to find out about what it entails within beauty photography. So do yourself a favor, you know, if you are a photographer wanting to get into any genre, you know, to, to, to go and do due diligence and to learn everything and anything about the genre that you want to get into, right? I mean, it makes perfect sense when you're briefing a makeup artist, you know, to tell the makeup artist, you know, what you want uh, and, and to know what you're talking about so you don't sound like a fool, for example. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you agree, Kurosh? Yes, yes, completely agree. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, I know, for example, you, you have done a bunch of like sports mm -hmm. uh, for mm -hmm. your clients. So you understand yep. what is a sport is like. Yep. You do your research, yep. you exactly. follow the brand. So it's, it's completely the different words. I mean, yep. when the clients comes to you, mm -hmm. they, they are confident to hand over everything to you just Okay, that's trust right. you, you know? That's right. Yeah. That's right. I mean it's 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 a lot about about you know, for example, you know, um fitness photography, it's about body movements. It's about you know, knowing that move, you know, in CrossFit, whether you're doing the battle ropes, you know, or you're doing a um, a certain kind of lift, you need to speak the lingo so that I can tell the athletes uh, and uh, you know 
the the people I'm working with to execute a certain move, for example. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, um, uh, it's all about understanding your genre. You know, the 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 language within uh, that that particular genre. I think that's very very important. Uh, in terms of learning makeup, I mean, you know, hair and makeup. It's 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 very easy today with with the internet to just go and research about 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 the entire world of of, of makeup, for example. For me, I think um, Allure, for example, is a very good resource. You think would 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 Allure be a very good place to yes. visit? Because I think they have been quite the authority on hair and makeup in terms of you know Allure the magazine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, uh, um, because they 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 cover a lot of trends, uh, in 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 hair and makeup. You know, essentially makeup. There's always a trend every season. There's a color. You know. Uh, there's a there's a there's a certain certain look to a to a particular season, and it and it also extends in terms of how it trickles down towards um, how it works with the fashion. They it it influences fashion in terms of the 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 style of the fashion, and vice versa. So so you know the you know for example, all the major houses are in in terms of fashion are going a little bit desaturated this season. You know that would then. Re- affect hair and makeup yeah right am i accurate to say something like that yeah yep okay yeah, so 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 in that sense i think you know um yeah we all have to have to have to have to go right in and and get our hands dirty and learn hair and makeup <laughs> yeah. if that's what you want to be a beauty photographer like Kush. Yeah. okay we've got a question from uh jd how much does the beauty photographer rely on retouching artists or I mean retouches in essence? Um, of course, retouching part of the process, we call it post-production. So we have pre-production, production, post-production. So post-production and retouching is of course is, is very important. I mean, because if you don't have a good retoucher and you don't take care of the retouching, all the other efforts you've done in pre-production for the casting, for for the lighting, everything in the production, or is gonna be like finished like that because of the wrong retouching. So I learned to to understand and know about the good retouching as well. I mean, I know many, many retouchers. I received many, many uh, requests. They wanna collaborate, they wanna, but I try to stick with the, my own retoucher. Maybe sometimes I give a chance to a few people to just do some tests to see how they go, but uh, I'm very straightforward with them. If mm-hmm. I don't like that work, I said, okay, I mm-hmm. cannot work. It's, sorry, mm-hmm. this, is, this mm-hmm. is not what I want. Mm-hmm. There's so many back and forth. So the retouchers, I train, I train them. I know I trust them. So mm-hmm. some of them, they are very, very good. I mean, I don't even, I just so I can send me the final. I don't even send it because they know what <laughs> yeah. I want. Okay. So yeah. so so that's something that you 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 build a working relationship with. They are not exclusive to you, but they are they are retouchers whom you have worked and and they have uh, over the years and they have understood what you like and what you don't like, right? Exactly. Yeah, because okay. back in the day I used to do my own retouching, but now it's really really take time and i don't have time to do because i have many many other stuff to do so it's not possible to sit there and do because the amount of the picture i produce every week is a lot even now i mean i do virtual shoot Mm -hmm. uh still i receive many many uh uh, content so i have to retouch those I cannot do everything. I'm only yeah, one person. So of course, I cannot do. Of course. Yeah. So based on my experience as the person who do retouching, so I understand, okay, what is the good retouching? What is the, because, um, and also I like, I like to move forward a little bit to have a more raw picture, more natural looks. Yeah, I try to, upgrade my style too i don't want to stay here forever because one of the thing i learned as an artist and photographer if you stay where you were like you're gonna die no one come Mm -hmm. to you especially in this market i mean i'm living in new york and us and la i mean there is a lot of people including 
the people who are in, the, in this industry over the last 30 years or 40 years or the people who just graduate and they are very, very talented. So there is a very, very big competition. So you always need to upgrade yourself with a new image. So one of the reasons I do more editorial because the editorials really help to keep moving and create new stuff and update your portfolio. Because for example, if I have a meeting today with a creative director in Revlon, so she already saw my picture. So even when I approach her again or him, so I have to show her or him something new because it's okay, I saw this picture. So what do you have? What's what's new? So something more interesting because I talk when I talk to them, you know, they tell me you never know, you can't guess how many photographers they approach me. More than 200 email every week or even more. Gosh. Yep. Yeah. And your email might be lost when you this mm -hmm. at the beginning. So why they don't reply me? <laughs> I was taking personal, but now oh, no, they are busy. They are receiving a lot of email, direct message on Instagram mm -hmm. and yeah, LinkedIn. They are how many projects they might have. They might have a few per month. So they exactly. give a chance to one uh, the people who worked with them before, or if they are not available, they might try the new person. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a big, big competition. <laughs> so, how 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 often do you test in terms of doing your personal shoots to to do exactly this? You know, do you do it yeah. on a on a weekly basis, or you know, um, in between your your commercial jobs and your editorials? Yeah, I mean. I, I don't do tests like before mm -hmm. these days. Mm -hmm. And my test is more like editorial style because okay. it's okay. Did I create this email? I don't want to just post it on Instagram. And just, this is yep. it. Yep. Uh, unless this is kind of like new experiment. I want to just try something new. Okay. I do test mm -hmm. uh, because if you want to, do tests you can do a lot of tests every day every week and mm -hmm. it's take time you have to manage your time okay you have time for your marketing for your mm -hmm. clients mm -hmm. for meeting mm -hmm. for some study or just research about learn new thing mm -hmm. and of course testing so if you want to do tests not a stop so how you want to make money so yes. how you want to manage the other stuff because testing is not enough. You have to take care of, because at the end of all of these tests, mm -hmm. you need to make money, right? Yes. Yes. You, you're not a rich man, just do yep. te tests yep. free right. for everyone, you know? Yes. Yeah, I mean, yes. I would say, let's back to your question. So how often I would say, I my standard is I have to create one amazing set pictures, like his editorial test mm -hmm. every month. Mm -hmm. Every month I have mm -hmm. to have something new because mm -hmm. every month I meet new people. I have meeting. Mm -hmm. So one of one of my job as a photographer or an artist mm -hmm. in New York City, because mm -hmm. in New York there is a lot of a lot of creative people. If yep. you do meeting every single day, even mm -hmm. after 10 years, you still have ending people yeah. you, you have to exactly. meet. Exactly. So that's right. Yeah. So it's good to create new content mm -hmm. and have your newsletter to send to the client, to the creative people and get mm -hmm. the meeting and meet them in mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard. I mean, I remember um, my ex agent, um, they um, set up a meeting for me with a big client. So I went there like many other meeting and there was a group of creative. There was a creative director, art director. So the creative director, she knows me and she, oh, I love your beauty. I want to hire you for, it was a very good client because it was an e-commerce kind of like they keep me busy forever. Mm -hmm. So I went there, I just represent myself, but um, I talked with all of them. So um, after a week, I follow up with my agent and say, okay, what's happened there? very excited to work with me mm -hmm. and she told me okay and let me follow up and she followed with the person she knows and and she explained oh you know what i i love this person i think she's he's he's nice person and his his work is great but 
or art director, she don't like she don't like him. <laughs> she think she's a snob. <laughs> and boom, done. That's you know, it. that's it. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. it. If someone don't like you, you know, they don't hire you. They hire someone they like. So I didn't. I mean, at the beginning, I become uh, upset. I said, well, "What? What did I say?" I mean, at the meeting, maybe I said something mm -hmm. translate translated yep. wrong. Yeah. But yep. that person think like that. You cannot change. I mean, of so course. yeah. I mean, all of this, but you learn. You know, yep. in a meeting, maybe it's better to be more quiet. Don't talk that much. Mm. Let's wait for the question. <laughs> you know. Uh, is like an embassy interview and you want to get the visa for US. You shouldn't <laughs> talk that much. Let them ask you something. So, I, you know, um, when you go and meet the creative, what I learned, um, because the pictures talk itself, mm. you shouldn't explain, okay, I take this picture. Even unless they ask you, okay, how you produce this image, what's, they, they mm. bring some question. But yeah. you shouldn't say more than your image you know right i mean I so yeah i mean all of these process is really really challenging process create mm -hmm. new image mm -hmm. the test try to send to the creative people get the meeting mm -hmm. and in the meeting try to be yourself and try to be more quiet a little bit and let let your image speak and For itself yeah and then maybe you can get the job so it's a very very <laughs> challenging and long process <laughs> right right and um, um you know I've, I've got a question i wanted to ask you earlier on um in terms of hair and makeup you know do you work with the usual people um or do you have do you are you always changing your 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 hair and makeup people depending on the job yeah i'm not i'm not always changing mm -hmm. uh hair and makeup mm -hmm. unless the clients they have an other idea they want to work with some some other people mm -hmm. but i'm mm -hmm. kind of open to right. work with anyone because right. uh if you want if you if you have a too much control on set you lose your creativity and you have to be open on um you, you have to work like a flow you know but mm -hmm. um of course i'm not going to work with the makeup artist work is not good and um i have some um trusted people like a retoucher i said mm -hmm. i since i have a better understanding than i compare myself now to like five years ago mm -hmm. so i know which makeup artist is kind of close to my style mm -hmm. and sometimes i try to bring the makeup artist is a little bit different from my style mm -hmm. so i challenge myself Mm -hmm. So I work with different style and mm -hmm. yeah, but okay. when you build your team, when the job or uh, commercial comes, so you know, mm -hmm. because each makeup artist, they have a different, different style. Yes. So if a job comes, is need a very, very like natural makeup, not yeah. that much heavy. So I know who's is fit for that. So mm -hmm. if the job comes with creative makeup in like body painting, like too much mm -hmm. stuff. So I know the best person for that. That's right. Yeah. And uh, okay. So uh, are you, you're represented by an agent right now, right? What, which no, which came first? I'm, I'm between agency. Okay. I had two, I had two agency. I left mm -hmm. my agency um, a year and a half ago. Okay. But I'm still be connect. I'm connected with them. I'm your okay. friend. Okay. But yeah, because I found out uh, it doesn't work for me and work for them. Okay. And one of the one of the mistake I had when I came to New York, I said, "Oh, if you have an agent, done. You're mm -hmm. yep. you're finished. You're, right. you're good." But yep. it's not right. I mean, because back in the day, the agent used to create job for you, you okay. used to do a lot of work for you. But yep. now they don't. They are oh, just waiting okay. for your invoice because <laughs> the market is very very tough. And the clients don't go with an agent. They just use another way to uh, find the artist. Mm -hmm. So um, I try to stay as independent Free. photographer and have my own. Okay. Okay. But I know all these agencies. Uh, I mean, 
I have a request from some smaller agency they want to sign me up, mm -hmm. but I didn't mm -hmm. say yes. I said, okay, I'm not ready right now, but mm -hmm. let's mm -hmm. wait to see how, but I'm not rushing to have an agent because I, I, I mean, some people might like to have an agent like a verified badge in their shoulder, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. don't think it's going to help me because right. we are living in this era you have to do 100% of the work or 90% of the work. Mm. And I mean, agent, honestly, is for the people who really don't have time to reply their email. They are super busy with different, different shoots and you mm. really, really don't have time. But my goal is to have a stadium manager mm. um, instead of having an agent because I know, I know all these clients, the agent know. I know all of them. I mean, yep. I know all these creative people. Mm -hmm. uh, so I prefer, yeah, to have an stadium manager in future or someone like an exclusive okay. agent rather than yep. to be in an agency in the middle of the other photographers. Because honestly, they most of it is, is not like work like before because mm -hmm. back in the day, yeah. yeah they get you the sweet jobs. Yep. Yeah. And I know all the agency because I, I sat down after I left my agency, I researched all the agency they are in New York City. Is more than 55 agency. Mm -hmm. And in total, they represent 700 photographers. It's and some crazy. of them, they yeah. had 60 photographers in their roster. Yeah, in their crazy. roster How do yeah. you want to take and, care yeah. of this? Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But I mean, I mean, uh, how how what would you recommend a newbie, for, you know, photographer trying to enter New York, for example, you know, um, in, I, I mean the the simplest and and most obvious thing that most photographers will do is to go into New York, show their book to agents, and you know, get represented because obviously yeah. they don't know the kind of people you know. You know, you have networked over the you know, the past couple of years to to know enough people, but coming in raw you know, right into, into New York, for example. Yeah. I mean, oh. um, if you are very, very new in New York city and you are looking for an agency, unfortunately it doesn't work mm. because they are asking, okay, who's your client here? Mm -hmm. And of course, when you are new, you don't have any client. I mean, mm. I used to have a lot of clients in back in Dubai, but mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Dubai, yeah, yep. US is US. Yep. So agency now, they are not looking for talented, amazing photographer. They are looking for the photographer who have a bring in voice. Okay. Okay. Who can bring so, work in for them? <laughs> yeah. Just work. bring money. Okay. Who's oh, your God. client? Yeah. Okay. Who, who's the person you met last week or what did you, I mean, if you show them, okay, I have a cover of the book. Mm -hmm. They don't care. I mean, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so because mm -hmm. editorial, they don't pay money. Yeah, unfortunately. Exactly. Back in the day, yep. I mean, photographer, I know they uh, make a lot of money from editorial. They have a contract, a million dollar contract with the Condé Nast mm -hmm. and they should. Mm -hmm. But now, the magazine is like yep. falling down. They are yep. Yep. trying to hang there and stay exactly. there. So, so. Um, yeah, I mean, if someone want to come to New York and work, I mean, I love New York. New York is the place mm -hmm. I really grow. Mm -hmm. And I grew very, very fast. With very, very, and I had a very, very hard time. A new challenge, mm -hmm. a lot of challenge, mm -hmm. financial mm -hmm. challenge. I mean, the weather is like tough. You know, mm -hmm. the, you mm -hmm. cannot shoot outside nine months of the year yep. because it's, even if sun is windy and the wind is like chill. Mm, but that's right i mean i'm so grateful i had this opportunity to have this mm -hmm. experience in this lifetime to work in new york city to work with amazing artists models mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. agencies mm -hmm. and yeah i'm so thankful and grateful for this opportunity because i know many many photographers around the world um they really really love just come to new york and shoot there because right. yeah a new york is a place you can find the best of everything, the best mm -hmm. of the makeup artists, hairstylists, uh, fashion studies, models, agencies, uh, because they come from all around the world. But 
if you want to start working in New York, I mean, the best way is just start doing tests for a model agency, try to create a relationship, good relationship with them mm -hmm. and make, um, create, because model agency could, they could introduce you to their client because sometimes the clients see this uh, model's picture, you know, who take that picture and some big agents, they write your name. Yep. Yep. So they might hire you. So, like, okay, I need this photographer too. So um, yeah, that's the first and the good step to work mm -hmm. with uh, that standard model agencies could be your best friend. If you want to do beauty, makeup artist, the good makeup artist is, is your best friend. You yes. try to learn from them about makeup, try to research about the brands. Now, these days, we have a lot of tons of beauty brands and we yep. come up every yes. day, every day, new brand. You know, yep. all these celebrities, they have their yeah. own beauty brand. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> and it's a healthy market because yep. I talked with one of the agents I know and she said beauty is much healthier market I mean, than yeah. fashion. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a multi-billion dollar uh, yeah. industry beauty in itself you know and uh, they, they th there's always something new you know in terms of colors and and, and so on and so forth yep right yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay okay um we have um let me see huh uh, if we have answered we answered kind of most of the questions mm -hmm. uh, i'm interested to know actually a little bit about you know you actually moving to LA, you know, LA and New York is vastly different. Uh, yeah. You know, um, you know, what, 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 what are the things you are doing now in LA, for example, to start all over again in terms of establishing yourself in a new city, in a new market? Yeah. I think if you live in New York, it was a, it was a conversation between me and one photo agent before coronavirus here in LA. So she said, oh, if you, if you live in New York City, you can live everywhere because you kind of have a thicker skin. Yeah. You are tough. You're ready for all kind yeah. of situation. Um, yeah, of course, New York and LA is a different market. Here is more, mm -hmm. a little more lifestyle and mm -hmm. more commercial. Mm -hmm. um, but I see some beauty brands start to have an office here and they start mm -hmm. shooting here too. And um, also, um, um, it's not that much different from New York because all the creative um, who lives in New York, they are kind of like back and forth between LA and New York, especially when the weather is not in the winter, mm -hmm. here's a place they always come to shoot in a location. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are kind of like traveling between New York and LA. So it wasn't hard for me to have a network here because since I was in New York City and lived there like over the last five years. So I know most of the network and the people here and they know me as well. So then um, it's, it's much easier uh, to start new. But I don't... I mean, for now, I'm staying in LA. I don't know what's going to happen in the future, especially with this situation, mm -hmm. political situation, and also um, the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. uh, what I share with you about my photo journey is before COVID-19. Yes, of course. So of course. after this, we yep. really don't know how the photography world and the fashion world, beauty world is going to be shaped. That's and right. for sure, we see the effects after a year, I mean, maybe a year later, we can talk again yeah, and yeah. see yeah. what's happening. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, um, I'm, I have a drive uh, in myself, mm -hmm. so I could easily start from zero. And I don't scare scared to start from zero. And I, I see this as a gift. Awesome. If you're able to start from nothing, because you feel okay if the yeah, universe yeah. take everything from you, yeah. you're still there. You can you can build a new one. Exactly. So, awesome. and um, is is necessary for an artist because you trap on your pattern and repeat mm. yourself forever. Yep. yep. 
So um, it's always good to have a reset button and just reset. Yeah, so do this something. Is your reset. Yeah. Yeah. This reset. Is your reset. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> um, before we even started, we were talking a little bit about your FaceTime uh, shoots, and then you know you were you were you were about to tell us how how you were doing it. Uh, uh, um, would you care to share with us a little bit about about yeah, your sure. recent? Um, um, let me yeah, share could... screen. Uh, your it's, it's on your Instagram, right? Yeah, it's on my Instagram. Yeah, you've been doing this. This these are all your FaceTime shoots. Um. This picture in the middle in this FaceTime, and if you scroll down, the body suit at the blue one, she's laying mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. That's one of my mm -hmm. favorite. So, yes. yeah, people call this FaceTime mm -hmm. shoot, mm -hmm. but I call it remote yep. photography. Yep. Because, first of all, I don't want to give a credit to the Apple for free yeah. <laughs> because it's not a FaceTime shoot. It is, yes, uh, exactly. It, I mean, I've done a shoot with a model the other week uh, with Samsung mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. quality is good as uh, Apple's. So yep. what I do, um, I don't take a screenshot and I don't take mm -hmm. a picture from the FaceTime because in FaceTime, when I talk mm -hmm. to you, I can press the button, it's kind of give, yep. like a live video or, yep. which is still, low resolution what mm -hmm. i do i ask the model um, to set the camera somewhere and i communicate with zoom and mm -hmm. i um, ask the model to share their phone screen with zoom so whatever mm -hmm. their phone see i see mm -hmm. if they go to the camera i see okay this is a friend okay maybe there is a, some lags because of the mm -hmm. connection but still yeah. i can see so um, I asked the model to put the camera setting on the video setting on 4K 60 frames per second. Mm -hmm. So technically, we shoot video. Mm. And so, for example, I say the model, okay, this this chair is perfect. For example, mm -hmm. this is a frame. You have to this this move. We do something like practice before we do the mm -hmm. press the record mm -hmm. button. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, now is good. Just jump and mm -hmm. do the record press the record button okay. and she starts recording herself and I'm going to direct from the, okay, this way, that way, hands up, hands down, mm -hmm. put the legs like that, look at the lens this mm -hmm. way or other kind of direction. So after all this finish, all the shots finished, mm -hmm. she's going to send all the files mm -hmm. as a raw or whatever it is on lead transfer mm -hmm. or Dropbox. So mm -hmm. later on, I have to sit down Mm -hmm. and play the video and, right. and find select the right frame and export right. it as PNG or TIFF, yep. Yep. which is not very, very high, but much better than the uh, uh, screen capture. Screen yep. screen capture. Yep. So you're still yep. able to do a little bit. So yeah, this is the way is where I do a uh, remote shoot, which is very, right. very hard because you, um, most of the model, they don't know about the lighting or... Mm. Uh, frame or mm -hmm. even they don't know how to send the file i have to train them okay this is called v transfer mm -hmm. you can drop the file mm -hmm. there so mm -hmm. but yeah okay yeah i don't know it's, it's very it's, cool it's, it's, it's very future, cool. yeah. but for me uh, as a person i like challenging so mm -hmm. i mm -hmm. love to uh, challenge myself when you mm -hmm. learn new things. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yeah. and and uh, since we're on the topic about challenging oneself, um, you know, tell us a bit about about you know your you you being a director, you know, in terms of all these kinds of, of yeah stuff for that you do. yeah for this one, um, mm -hmm. this was a project for a client we done. Uh, Have you got the charger for this laptop? Yeah, what? Let me. Carry on. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah, I, I said, why not? I mean, uh, the creative director hired me for this project and mm -hmm. we done this for a client. Mm -hmm. So this is for their social media mm -hmm. for Instagram and IGTV. So, uh, it was a great experience because I had my VP on set mm -hmm. and I wasn't worried that much about the camera and this stuff. Mm -hmm. said, okay. This is a frame and this is the activity and the model should do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I learned to um, um, 
direct. So, so because if you if you back to a conversation, I mean, if you mm-hmm. know what you want on set, then yep. you can direct. But if you don't yes. know what you want, you cannot direct because you don't know mm-hmm. what you want. So, mm-hmm. so um, we had a very nice smooth board for this, and we work on pre-production. Uh, so, what is the shot? Is what is the the shot we could use with this kind of budget? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we work a lot with um, Steph and company, the creative mm-hmm. diary company mm-hmm. here. So we made this mood board and make this shoot happen. So, um, yeah, I mean, again, uh, as a director, you should have a very good relationship with your DP and also mm-hmm. to understand a little bit about their camera and what they can do or they, what they cannot do. Mm-hmm. And um, don't mix it up with photography because it's completely different because you don't hold the camera on your hands. Yes. So you're just staying there and looking at the monitor, mm-hmm. try to direct the, uh, the model mm-hmm. and the set. And it's really, really hard. I mean, especially if you want to do kind of like beauty and close up, yes. uh, the makeup should be very, very. Um, um, clean without yes. any mistake because later on in post production, yeah, it's going to be a great retouch, have to retouch frame, frame by, by frame. frame. Yeah, photoshopping yeah. can be a pain, yes, yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I mean, uh, you know, having having motion in your portfolio is very important these days because, um, and we are living in digital era, so um, mm-hmm. now we have big LCD screen in all the stores or Mm -hmm. subways, they -hmm. need moving image, you know, even just five seconds. So what I understand, okay. And my agent, they told me many, many times, oh, you have to have this kind of like Mm -hmm. motion in your portfolio because the client looking for a photographer Mm -hmm. to do everything. (laughs) That's right. Even sometimes they don't have a budget for DP. I mean, if they are a social (laughs) media client, you have only your DSLR camera, right? You shoot a still and you shoot a little bit video, and that's it. Okay, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, I used to do some uh videography with Handycam. You remember Handycam, the Sony, yep. that there was, yeah, yep. like that, yeah. Uh, so yeah, when I was a child, teenager, we had at home for I used to do mm-hmm. video that those days, so yeah, doing motion is. It's really, really uh, fun Mm -hmm. and it's hard in the same time because um, it's not like a picture you can change after, you know, you you have to um, be um, very particular about doing the shooting, about the movement and the crops and all details Mm -hmm. because you cannot change in Photoshop, you know. We are talking about 20 frames per second. Yes. 60 frames per second. So all the yes. shots should be very, very clean. That's right. So um, I want to ask you a question, if you don't mind. So h- how's yes. the beauty market in Singapore? And how's the beauty photographer works there? Or if you can mm, share. I would, I, would, I would say straight up, there isn't much of an editorial beauty industry, so right. to speak. You know, because I think... Um, a lot of the editorial beauty shots or editorial fashion shots are being shot now by in-house photographers, right? Magazines. Um, I used to do a lot of edi- you know, editorial, you know, in my younger days as well. You know, that that was kind of a bit of my playground that I, like you, used to do my test. Editorial was my test ground. Right. I don't do tests. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I, I, I've never really done tests editorial was like a test in itself for me to push the envelope with the various styles that I can do. Uh, but in, uh, as, as, the, as the editorial market started to become, you know, uh, a challenge in essence because of, um, you know, how, how uh, the internet is growing, magazines, physical magazines are starting to become a thing of a past, obviously, right? So a lot of the magazines, the publications, um, in 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 essence, started to source in-house. They hire a full-time photographer, 
who is often a general photographer who can shoot a little bit of everything decently, right? right. And then uh, these photographers would then shoot the range. Um, so, you know, you don't get your your hot beauty photographer shooting for magazines any, you know, uh, uh, that much. And they will buy editorials from overseas photographers, you know, like, like, like you, for example, you know, they'll buy uh, uh, overseas editorials from you and then they'll, they'll run it in their magazines, for example. Right. So in that essence, um, I don't see much of a editorial beauty market, perhaps uh, for, for commercial wise, um, yeah, there, there, there are some of the, you know, big, big, uh, uh, brands like PNG and Unilever here who have their HQ here in Singapore. So, so, so they, and, and, and some of the agencies, uh, the big, big agencies in Singapore are running their, their, their campaigns out of Singapore in terms of the offices, um, uh, in terms of the ad agencies. So that is perhaps where the beauty industry can can exist in terms of photographers uh, but even that said a lot of beauty photography are shot in thailand uh, primarily because of the of the uh, hairstylists that a lot of hair commercials are shot in thailand primarily because they have the best um, um, hairstylists who can who can do that level of commercial hair you know, for, right. for the Asian market as well, you know, and then because of that, a lot of beauty f uh, photography is being done there as well uh, in, 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 in Thailand, for example. Um, yeah, I think, you know, in, in, in essence, it's not as, as you know, you, uh, we don't shoot that much um, for the local market in essence, because Singapore is a very small country. Right, with right. with 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 uh, you know a, a, a certain amount of population, uh, and and yeah, it's it's just not one of those markets that 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 would that would be so broad, you know, for for the brands to put you know their money in you know you know what I'm, you know what I'm trying to say, so right. so you know because if you look around Asia, you look at Indonesia for example, you look at Malaysia, they are way. You know they are you know hundred times bigger than Singapore. You know a any other country is, is easily a hundred times bigger than Singapore, right? Um, but Singapore and, is an amazing country. I love Singapore. I mean, yeah, I mean it's a, it's a clean, it's a safe, safe country. You know, yeah. it has its merits for you know for sure. You know, but if you if you even look at the population in itself, I and I, I don't know where are we now? Seven million. You know, half of that are foreign. You know, uh, um, nationals. You know from right. the blue collars to the white collars right you know and 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 that's half literally half of that population are you know foreign um, nationals working in singapore so the 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 singaporeans in itself is not a very big you know for for, for uh, big enough a market for the brands to want to to do right. anything specially for singapore for example you know what i mean it's usually for asia <laughs> right <laughs> So it's a it's a it's a it's a strange it's a slightly strange market in Singapore I would say you know yeah. for 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 local photographers you know the kind of of, of work we do are, are very localized in 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 essence and they are not mm -hmm. more often than not not very uh, of a high level because again brands will want to spend that kind of money on three million people for example <laughs> you know what I mean right. to talk to three million people you know that's why I've you know, as a photographer, I've branched myself out of Singapore. You know, I practice, you know, a lot of my work in China, for example, because they have bigger budgets and and because they are willing to spend that kind of money in a print ad because that print ad will be seen by how many millions of people in China, for example. And and they shoot for China alone is enough for them. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> right? So, so they are willing. Hence, they are willing to spend you know, X amount of dollars for that particular print ad because it will reach a, a much broader audience. You know, so by default of that, I, um, in, in many essence, a lot of the campaigns, I don't particularly see a lot of money being pushed into Singapore, for example. You know, but it is a hub. It's a hub for a lot of, of international business that base themselves here, you know, yeah. of, of which 
then we do regional campaigns. You know, from a local standpoint, not much. But regionally, uh, yes, we do do quite a bit of regional work that is that will exist in the whole region. Right. And what about the Australia? Because you're kind of close mm. there, right? Like... Yeah, as much as we are close, um, we are we don't really cross pollinate much, because mm. Australians have their own uh, aesthetic, their own economy, and their own infrastructure. Uh, the Asian culture, of uh, in terms of our aesthetic, our our sensibilities, don't you know are are not very suited in terms. You know, so what I'm trying to say is. You know, if a typical Singaporean photographer would carry his portfolio and go to Australia, his aesthetic will look very different from the Australian photographers, right. right? Primarily because first things first is the 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 light, the quality of light, right? Singapore is a small city. We are more often than not, you know, we don't have you know much golden hour light, and we you know our light just goes above us and comes down very quickly. We are on the equator, for example. We don't get long hours, you know, long daylight. Uh, our light is not clean because we are very, very humid. Uh, the humidity affects the quality of light. You know, all these factors makes us not very good daylight photographers because we have shit daylight to work <laughs> with. Literally, I have very shit daylight to work with in Singapore. I know I how cannot... you're particular about lighting. I mean, when every time you post the <laughs> behind the scenes of your yeah. set, you are uh -huh. like a like in yeah. Hollywood. <laughs> that's that, because right? yeah, that's because I don't have good light. I got to make my good light. You know what I mean? And that's also why Singapore photographers, if 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 we do track back to history, you know, over the last couple of decades, Singapore photographers have always been known to be very good studio photographers. That's because mm -hmm. we don't have good light here. That's why we need to create our light. You know what I mean? Yes. So so that's primarily why. And then when you when you pair yourself up with an Australian photographer, they have such beautiful light there that the the portfolio is just going to look, you know, immensely different from the kind of work that we have, and they are used to that aesthetic that that bright, clean, crispy, contrasty light, right, right. And then here we have overcast, you know, overcast light with with shadows that are of a certain length. You know, our shadows are never long, because our sun just goes shoop, over the horizon and it's gone. You know, right. and then we don't have enough open space for the for the sun to penetrate through to give you that kind of long shadows, because we have mm -hmm. buildings everywhere, right? To the point where we don't get that kind of clean open spaces to get that kind of long clean shadows as well. So geographically, uh, you know, we it it makes us the Singaporean photographers look a certain way. That's why I always urge Singaporean photographers to to try to, I mean, you know, look and work with, you know, pass their, their handicap, for example, you know what I mean? Um, you know, uh, I mean, the sun is free, you know, fly to Australia and do a test shoot there, for example, you know, nobody <laughs> owns the sun, <laughs> you know, yeah. so, so, so that's kind of what I did, you know, because I've, I've lost jobs to Australian and New Zealand photographers who have beautiful work in their portfolios, for example. Right, mm -hmm. they always win the jobs because their light is a lot better than mine, you know. But when they do come here and shoot, they will soon notice that they are not able to deliver that kind of quality of light, based off their portfolio, you know. And their pictures will look somewhat the same as mine or worse than mine because they don't know how to to work with 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 with, with that kind of light. So that 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 frustrated me as a photographer that I'm you know I keep losing that kind of jobs. So what right. I did, I flew to Australia and did a couple of test shoots there. <laughs> Right, you okay. know, and then I came back with test shoots with that same quality of light, you know, and that same kind of of of, of work that 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 all these all these you know photographers have, and mm -hmm. because of that, you know, I'm I'm starting to be on par with them, and I felt that it's a fair fight now, you know, I'm you know I'm I'm, I'm bringing the right tool to the to the battle, you know, what I mean, you know, it's not a knife to a to a fire fight, you know, what I mean, right, you yeah. know. So, 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 so in that sense, I think um, we need to work past our constraints here in, in Singapore, at least, right? Yeah. I used yeah. to shoot for uh, an official Singapore a couple of times, mm -hmm. but from New York. So, mm -hmm. but I never had the chance to come to Singapore and shoot there. So maybe it's in the future. And I see Vogue Singapore just launched 
couple of months ago, I think before COVID-19. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I see they are... I mean, Vogue I has, have... has opened and closed and opened and closed in Singapore yeah. so many times. Yeah. Yeah. I talked with El Singapore a couple of years ago and said, so right. oh, we don't work anymore. I mean, we don't have prints anymore. We have mm. just talked with online. Yeah. But I don't know, maybe Vogue could stay a little longer because it's a bigger brand. Mm-hmm, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, I love Singapore. I remember uh, my trip to the Singapore when I met you there, yep. 2013, right? No, yep. 2013. Yeah, it was a very short trip, but I really, really love Singapore. I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah, the people is like educate people is is mm-hmm. completely different mm-hmm. from the mm-hmm. other neighbors country. So it's like yep. kind of like I would say like higher class. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. And okay beautiful weather i mean okay. it's like everything is clean yeah the architect is amazing yeah, yeah. Um, well, i mean you know end of day the grass is always greener right <laughs> <laughs> stay here long enough you're gonna find the flaws as well <laughs> right right I know. yeah 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 but in um, terms of light maybe yeah you can i mean here in california i think we have mm, longer beautiful light yeah 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 the arc is is, is different yeah yeah Yes, yeah, sunset um, is, here is like a magic. I mean, yesterday yes. I just took a picture from my balcony. It's like, wow, mm-hmm. this is painting. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> I don't yes, know how to this. It's amazing. So, lovely. Um, yeah, you told me you have you have a potential job to come to California maybe soon, right? And you are still. Uh, yeah. No, I was supposed to be in California um, last week. I uh, know um, the beginning of May. Beginning of May. I was supposed to be there uh, at the Palm Springs Photo Festival. Uh, I was supposed to attend a workshop w- with Nadav Kander. Uh, okay. But yeah, yeah, that was canned. So I, I know. I mean, it's pushed. It's pushed to September. But to be honest, I don't think it's going to happen in September as well. So, so, so I'm getting my refund. I'm not going. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I would, and 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 I would have to I have to figure out another way of of you know meeting the Daf Kanda, one of my heroes. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, since you're there, you should consider. You know, it might it might still happen. Yeah, sure. Send me uh, the link. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll send you the link after this. Um, JD mentioned that your Instagram your Instagram account is private. Is it? Is it, it's private? Is oh it? yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, okay. I just put it in private, but I okay. Could, um, I did it a couple of days ago so okay okay i mean i mean it's it's you know it's your your privacy so you know by all means if no, you, no, if it's you want because to a temporary it. because uh right, right. i did it for some reason but i'm gonna okay. come back soon okay. so okay it, so. cool cool lovely lovely uh all right guys uh, any other questions for for uh, uh kuroshia come on Anyone? We've got, we've got, um, let's see. Any, any on Facebook live, uh, Daniel? Uh, nope. Yeah. Okay. We're good there. Yep, we're cool, good. cool. Awesome. Um, any last words, uh, Kurosh? No, I mean, uh, it was an honor to talk to you. My yes. Brother. It's, yes. It's thank you. Time. This is, this thank is you to reconnect again here yeah awesome i think i think that's the beauty of i think there are a few more questions though oh yeah yeah okay okay cool 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 let's let's take this this few few last ones okay um how did you develop your style over time um Kurosh? just just doing uh just practicing keep doing and doing a lot of mistake and from your mistake of course you can learn much more because i think um the best teacher you have is just you. I mean, you have to do because if I don't do things, so I never know. So based on the risk I took over the last, uh, let's say five years, 10 years, I do photography outside of my country. So of course I had a hard time. I had a tough time. I had challenging a lot. So I did a lot of mistakes, but based on those I learned, okay, uh this is who i am or this is what um this is the right way to do these things so and i still 
I'm saying I'm not, I know, I don't know everything. I mean, I still try to learn more. I mean, there's much, much more. I mean, that's the beauty of life because yes. there's no end. There's infinite yes. way to things and move forward. Yes. So if I teach myself, if you tell yourself, okay, I'm the best, I'm done, I'm the master, then you're nothing. So <laughs> it's better exactly. always to be a student, stay as yes. a student. I mean, I mean, you know, uh, uh, on this topic of evolution, you know, this was the you I saw. Yeah, yeah. When, when I met you, yeah. <laughs> right? You know, this was this was you. You know, at that time, you know, this was your style. This was your look. Yeah. Uh, you know, and 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 how you evolved from this, you know, HDR, you know, overlit, yeah, you know, aesthetic, you know, which is you know over over retouched look, you know, to to the to the evolution of you today exactly. you know it's a huge huge jump my friend huge jump from that aesthetic to this aesthetic <laughs> you know? Thank you. so 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 in a sense you know i mean i mean guys you know you look at the way he's evolved you know i mean for those of you who 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 dive deep into his instagram for example i personally do a lot of deep dives into photographers instagram what i will do personally to stop that photographer that i appreciate is to go right down to the very first picture that he posted in Instagram, right? And see how that photographer evolved. Over, over the, you know, as you scroll, you see how a photographer evolved. You know, learn how they become who they are today. From that first post to the current post, you can see the evolution, right? You can, you can totally see the evolution of any photographer. And then from there, backtrack, deconstruct, you know, reverse engineer, and 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 you know that 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 is in itself a very good um, way to figure out how to evolve by looking at photo you know, other photographers you appreciate and see how they evolve. You know, because whatever that Kurosh has 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 done over the years, it's it's obviously because of you know the many things he's put himself into. Yeah, he he immersed himself into, you know the. The, the the New York uh, way of life, you know, in the in the in the in the New York way of doing things and seeing things, and with the infrastructure and the community within, he's able to elevate his his work, you know, quite 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 amazingly, right? Uh, does that does that answer your question, JD? Yeah. So how do you keep up with ever changing fashion style, Kurosh? <laughs> what is the question again? Um, how do you keep up with ever-changing fashion style? How do I keep okay. keep up with fashion? I mean, how do you keep up with fashion? I mean, every every year we have got four seasons, right? You know, yeah. and then we've got cruise collections as well, and 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 whatsoever. How do you keep yeah. keep up? You know, or how yeah, do you, you stay always, ahead of the curve? You always you always need to just keep moving. Don't look back. I'm one of the thing I learn because. In general, all people, we are kind of like attached to things. It could be a smartphone, to the people, to the memories, to some style, to some patterns. So what I learned, just say goodbye peacefully to uh, to the things happening in the past and try to stay in the present moment. That's my meditation and awesome. yoga and shamanic practice. So <laughs> try to stay in the moment. I mean... Of course, many things happened yesterday, but now is now. I mean, I shouldn't just think that much about what's going on. I mean, now we are talking about my past and what my experience is, but this is happening right now. So it's kind of like, for sure, some teaching for me. For the question um, my friend asked, so um, so need, you need to be connected to, uh, to the creative people who work in this industry. I mean, today, people are lucky more than before because they have an amazing platform like social media, Instagram. I mean, back in the day, I remember 20 years ago when I was interested in mm -hmm. fashion photography, mm -hmm. I couldn't find in Iran like Vogue magazine. Mm -hmm. Maybe I received one from, I mean, my auntie brings the Vogue from US mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it was like for last year. It was in the current. But now yeah. you see 
the same time then release the Vogue US cover, you see everywhere. I mean, the people who in Afghanistan, they can see the Vogue yeah. cover. I mean, yep. you see the inspiration, you see the style, you see the mood. So it's much, much easier. So mm -hmm. yeah, try to be, um, I mean, um, do not lost in Instagram feeds because people follow many, many, many things and people post many, many things. And especially during these days, uh, what's happening in this political and these things, people post a lot of things too much. I mean, just repeating and reposting from different people. So try to have your goals for when you open your Instagram. What are you looking for? You want to just waste your time for two hours, just scroll down, just see the story, or you are looking for some inspiration. And also other platform like Pinterest is a good um, platform if you want to really looking for an image, related image, like um, you're looking for some mood board, create mood board there. So yeah. I mean, okay, very cool. Thank you. Thank you. Great um, a last question or oh, well, no, um, from from payment. He well, he, he congratulates you. He's uh, you're his idol. In the way you know, you, you you took your success and always, you know, you know, been so motivated. So that's a lovely compliment from payment. Thank and, you. Uh, he's asking, you know, what what is your inspiration? What inspires you today? At this moment? Um, I don't have a particular, uh, um, specific inspiration to say, okay, this person or this brand is my inspiration, mm -hmm. but I try to keep my eyes open and try to, try to see things. I mean, nature always is the best inspiration. And um, I try to, I mean, when I, used, when I used to live in New York City, I always was in Guggenheim Museum, MoMA, yep. Lidney Museum, and try to go to art galleries to see. Because, you know, uh, when you're this, then back in the day, I was thinking, when you're a photographer, you have to see, only see the pictures of the photographer. No, I mean, you yep. can't go to the gallery, see the graphic design, the painting. I mean, there's yep. much, much more there. I mean. Exactly. You never know. You so go to the gallery and you see the amazing uh, sculpture, sculpture mm -hmm. or something, yep. and you inspire. Oh, maybe we can do something like based on this form or this yep. story. And um, and also, as a big fan of the cinema, I mean, I I I wanted to be an actor when I was younger. So, mm -hmm. uh, cinema is a big inspiration, if you ask me, because the great movies. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we are always mix up everything. You see amazing images, uh, mm -hmm. amazing stories, music, all of this in one package. It's called movie. So yeah, mm -hmm. good movies for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it was one of my is big inspiration. Awesome. Yeah. Super. <laughs> cool. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, um, Kurosh, I would like to thank you very much for, thank you. Thank you, for being, you know, being with us and being so early and, and I really appreciate. And uh, I'm going to, you know, wish you all the success in LA, you know, thank um, you, I'm looking forward to, you know, what you, you make of LA, you know, you have conquered yeah. New York. I want to see you, you know, how, how, how you're going to take, take LA. Yeah. 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 Thank <laughs> you. And I'm looking forward to see you and your team soon. Yes. Singapore. Yes. Yeah. Yes, for sure. You know, you know, when I come over someday to the States, I'll definitely look you up as always. And yeah. I send peace to everyone who are listening to this uh, uh, conversation and peace to all around the world. And hopefully we have good news. Yes, and, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, we, are, we are just coming out of a two-month lockdown. Uh, we are going to the first phase of opening up Singapore. So this is phase one which still doesn't allow the photography industry to open. We are still not in the, in the opening phase for the photographers. So hopefully uh, come, you know, the second phase, which potentially could be next month, um, you know, right. there might be a opening up of our industry and then we can all start to work again. So yeah, we, you know, interesting times, but we, 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 we persevere on and make the best of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, brother. Thank I'll you, brother. see you. We Thank keep you in so touch. Much. Yeah. Thank you. And um, I wish you a wonderful shoot later. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Bye. See you, buddy. Thank you. Bye.
Well, guys, thanks everybody uh, for, for, for joining us today. In fact, today is our 25th, um, 25th episode. Um, yeah, and um, it's, it's, it's been a bit of a journey for us. Um, again, here we are, trying to, we are trying to do as much as we can um, to, to bring to you quality content. Um, it's not easy, <laughs> I can tell you, but we'll try. Um, we, we, we have two possible things that might happen this Friday. We don't know yet. Um, Friday is, is, is going to be our next episode, our next session. Uh, primarily because we are also waiting on what's going to happen tomorrow. Tomorrow, is going, there's going to be a big town hall meeting uh, with the entire Singapore photography industry. So um, do join in if you want. I think it's going to be a couple of hundred, you know, two, three hundred people, you know, on, 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 on this town hall conversation uh, that's going to be led by the PPAS uh, of Singapore. Um, uh, and and the committee and 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 some 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 officials I believe will be there in a, in a, in the observatory uh, capacity, and of which we will talk about how we can open up and 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 put safe practices into place for the photographic industry, right? So uh, please do join in, and um, after that perhaps you know we could we could then see how that develops and then maybe do a, another session based on that similar topic and, and to talk about more in detail uh, on Friday perhaps. But if we don't have enough information moving forward, we will then push it to the next week and we'll find a filler to fill in this Friday. Uh, but yeah, okay, how to join JD? Uh, let me, Daniel, you have it? Uh, hold on, give me a moment. Coming up. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right. Uh, click, click and join. Um, register. You need to register, JD, and then uh, they will send you a link code uh, for your registration to join in. Yeah. Um, so, all right. Uh, thank you, everybody. Again, have a beautiful um, evening. Good night. Thanks for being part of this. Um, I hope you enjoyed this very delightful session with Kurosh. As you can see, um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's almost a whole different world in New York, right? Um, you know, being, being a, a beauty photographer there has its own challenges. It might look, you know, all shiny and bright, but, you know, he has gone through a lot. You know, I know he's gone through a lot. It, 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 it wasn't an easy time for him, you know, coming up the ranks, you know, to, to, to be this good a photographer in New York, um, you know he's one of the the the, the success stories. But you know there, there are so many other photographers out there who are struggling. Um, it is it is definitely, you know, the cream of the crop over there. So you are really a small fish in a very big pond. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, it's still New York, you know, um, and I believe, you know, it's still a lot of dreams for photographers you know i myself have have dreamt of going there and nearly moved there myself i nearly got represented there in new york as well but i've but i soon decided you know what you know fuck it you know i will i will just concentrate uh, uh it was a long story you know um i i nearly got taken up by a big agent and then i was dropped and then uh anyway all said um uh, I took that as fuel to reposition myself in in Asia, and you know that 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 kind of propelled me to do what I do in Asia. Uh, but sometimes you need to look at it that way. You need to find that fuel to push through. You know whatever whatever you might be, whatever difficulties or obstacles that may be in your way. You know use it use it to fan your fire and and and, and push through as a photographer. You know, all right. Thanks, guys, and good night. Good night, Jean. Thank you, brother. Uh, yeah, sure, JD. Possible. We could do one uh, where single light, uh, artificial light source. So it's a one light kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. We can, we can, we can, we can possibly do that. That, that, that would be cool. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Sure, we're good. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Delvin, thank you. Good night. Thanks, thanks, Rogan.
uh, thanks JD. Yes, we will. We will think about it um, and do something. You know, I mean, here at Raw, we always try to, we 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 want to always try to do something extra different. You know, um, not just something easy, and 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 something straightforward. You know, we we don't want to be lazy. Um, yeah. So yes, let us plan something and get back to you. <laughs>